Okay, so all my twins out there, all of you, all of my peeps that are all up in here. Hey, Sam. All of my peeps that are up in here that are on a twin flame journey. How are you guys feeling? Um, I think I want to do another twin flame discussion soon, a twin flame story time. Um, I mean, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really have anything to say as far as like an update on my journey. Not that I'm trying to spill all the tea on my journey. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> but, um, I feel like we should have a, a little, a little chat, a little get together soon to have a little discussion. But how are you guys feeling? Exhausted. Yeah. All right. I totally get that. Twin flame here. Think you're getting attacked and you're tired. Yeah. Um, it, there could be, and, you know, this is something that I really thought of as, you know, when I was going through my situation last week. Um, you know, where I felt like I was under a little bit of a psychic attack. As things happen, and as you and your twin like come closer and closer together energetically, there is going there are going to be moments where there are going to be negative entities that are trying to get in. You could call it your ego, you could call it the devil. I mean, you could call it the darkness, whatever you want. But there are going to be some moments where there are going to be some negative entities that are trying to stop you two from coming together, or even to connect energetically, trying to rear their ugly head and get all up in there. All right. Um, Fucking, there are moments where I'd be having just telepathic conversations on my own involved in my own situation. All of a sudden, I'll start to hear these voices that, like, don't match at all. Like, they sound completely different. They sound very dark. They often sound male or masculine. Um, but they're trying to, like, get in between and, like, you know, get us off our paths and get us into, like, a negative energy, which they're just going to siphon. Energy vampires are real, whether they're walking human beings or whether they're just in as a, a ethereal form. So, okay, well, I, I'm glad you guys are doing well. I mean, hang in there. You know, you got this. We'll do another Twin Flame discussion next uh, sometime soon. Um, story time would be fun. You sent payment. All right, Olinda. Right. And it's crazy how that still kind of boggles my mind how so many of us can be on this journey and experience and like we all have our different circumstances, but we all experience very similar things. It's almost kind of creepy. But at the same time, when you think about it, we're all one anyway. So it's not really that big of a thing. All right, kids. So let's look into the full moon. So apparently the full moon is this coming Sunday. Um, and it's in Leo. And actually, in Western astrology, my moon is in Leo. In Eastern astrology, my moon is in Cancer. And so maybe that's why this isn't affecting me that much. I mean, I haven't, I didn't even know a full moon was coming. And there have been some moments where like a full moon is coming and I'm just like a, a wreck. Um, but this time, maybe it's just, maybe, maybe what I'm experiencing is the fatigue surrounding the full moon energies. So, okay. So let's look. Let's get a little bit of an energetic check-in on the moon, the full moon, this coming Sunday in Leo. Let's see. I'm going to give this one more shuffle. And then we will see what we got. So for this full moon in Leo, what are we looking at here? What energy? Six of Pentacles with the Emperor. Okay. Now, we could be talking to the masculine here. Maybe the divine masculine counterpart, or this could be the masculine within you. Or you could just be... Uh, interesting, What I'm get, as the sense that I'm getting from this emperor, we have the emperor and the six of pentacles here. All right, so we're talking about the full moon in Leo. Um, and I'm feeling like an, like this is kind of like an activation point. Like this is a, this is, this full moon is in Leo is going to influence some sort of generosity, maybe philanthropy um, on behalf of maybe someone that is like really powerful, has a lot of influence with this emperor card here, or this could just be like your own in your own life, your own situation. Um, like taking your power back in some way and making an executive decision to be more giving, more compassionate, more loving, something like that with the Six of Pentacles. Uh, uh, overall energy at the bottom of the deck so far is the Two of Wands, all right? So there's, it's a choice that is being made. This could be a choice that, you, that you've already made. This could be a choice that you're looking to make. I mean, this is a general reading, so take it as it resonates. You could be anywhere on this spectrum. But... I'm, what I'm hearing specifically is the choice is being made. 
and it could be an energy of this could be this could have to do with love this could be like you you know the divine masculine or your divine masculine here with the emperor energy is making a choice what i'm feeling specifically for some of you out here is this choice that's being made in terms of of, of reciprocity or whatnot making some sort of generous offer or being generous in some way or giving back in some way it's as if they wanted this person or you wants to give back to someone or something like a situation or a person <laughs> i kind of want to say situationship but that doesn't mean it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship but giving back to someone that has given a lot to you or a lot to them giving back to a situation or a circumstance that this person or you feel like has really shown you a lot of unconditional love or shown you a lot of support that's very interesting i want to look at this six of pentacles a little bit more here tell us a little bit more about this six of pentacles please spirit and this really just feels this kind of feels like a heart chakra opening that's kind of it's like my i'm, I'm feeling through this energy oh well looky here we have the devil overall energy is the chariot right now Well, this is interesting. Okay, so why is the devil here now? But I was saying that I feel this energy of heart chakra opening, and um, and even if this doesn't, even if this doesn't lead to any physical action or any like something something materializing or happening in the three D, if this also what I was picking up on in, initially is this kind of feels like a heart chakra opening like a, a settling into your heart chakra in some way or expanding or just feeling this sense of yeah i keep hearing like philanthropy or mm, optimism wanting to give back wanting to give what you have received in some way so okay um but why is the devil here now uh, kind of what i'm getting is the devil is kind of a past energy because it's there's almost what I'm feeling with this because the devil has come out because I'm trying to figure out what the six of pentacles is and the devil has come out here and the, 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 to me the devil is speaking to a past energy in which maybe there have been circumstances it could have been karma it could have been narcissism it could have just been like codependency or whatnot there could have been there could have been something negative ties to people toxic energies toxic relationships toxic people toxic friends around you just a toxic environment but it feels like there was something from the past represented by this devil energy that has held this six of pentacles or the sense of reciprocity back and with the emperor here it feels like you or maybe this is someone you're connecting to i don't know but i'm speaking to you you being whomever is resonating with this right now it's like you're making some sort of executive decision to shut the devil down somehow and to give back or, or give up some sort of toxic energy or toxic ways and really kind of give back in some way. And this could be to this this energy of giving back could be very much um, to one central person. So I feel I do feel like it could be a romantic situation. All right. But uh, help us understand here. Six of Pentacles and the devil. What is what is the devil? talking about here. oh my god oh my god i knew this was gonna happen i knew this was gonna happen because i am picking i am picking up on counterparts all right I, we have the emperor here right and and okay so this doesn't have to be romantic but i was thinking maybe this is romantic especially because what this feels like here is there was some sort of toxic energy or toxic element that was keeping some sort of uh, we'll call it love or appreciation from flowing between individuals potential partners even and at, the, at and in, in a split second right before i started pulling more clarification i thought am i got a flash of the empress in my head and i was like okay well that makes sense especially if we're talking divine counterparts because this could be a situation in which the masculine is deciding it, the masculine could be either deciding to which is leading him to him or her to take some action on or as le at least is settling into the energy of being aware of this connection and being aware of wanting to, in essence, cut out the middleman, the middleman being the devil, and go straight to giving to the source. And so, with that said, holy shit, guess what came out? The Empress. The Empress, y'all. And I'm hearing no more toxic energy. And then also what's underneath the deck is the star. 
is the star. Wish fulfill wish wish fulfillment, but also healing. Here's the thing, you guys, and I'm glad this has come out because I also kind of wanted to do a little bit of a twin flame pull. So I'm glad this is coming out this way. Now, before I go any further, I do want to clear up for those of you that don't resonate with a twin flame journey. And this isn't resonating and and or or both. And this isn't resonating with. Um, yes, there are happy hour spots still available. PayPal.me slash divine conversations. Twenty five dollars. Make sure to put your question in the notes section. Yes. Excellent. OK, so for those of you that aren't necessarily resonating with this on a romantic level, uh, what I'm getting here with the emergence of the Empress, and this makes perfect sense because this is a lot of what my channel is um, based on anyway, the balance between masculine and feminine energies within, right? So there's an energy of being able to take some sort of leadership role or make some sort of executive decision um, or take your power back in some way that's leading you to allowing yourself to be more compassionate, be more giving, um, be more philanthropical if that's if that's your thing because that's a, that's a, that's something I'm hearing quite often. So this really could be the onset for some of you. This could be the onset of a major life change in terms of your career, um, in terms of like your mission work, your light work, if that's how you identify, if that's how, what resonates with you. Um, Something like that. This could actually, I, I am seeing a pretty big, significant career change for some of you. Um, it, unless that's like a, a small amount of you. It doesn't matter. This is a general reading. But this is all happening because you have found a sense of balance between the masculine and the feminine energies within you. Whether you started out as the dominantly feminine and now you've learned to balance your masculine energies. Or you started out dominantly masculine and now you're learning to balance out your feminine energies. I feel the strongest thing that I feel coming through for whomever is resonating with this as uh, with the reading in this um, frame of mind. I feel that the strongest thing that I feel coming through is that this is an energy where this was someone that was very masculine at first or dominantly masculine has always been dominantly masculine in their energetic expression, whether you're a man or a woman, doesn't matter, that has recently learned about connecting with their feminine side and balancing and integrating that, which is bringing a level of compassionate awareness to the reality that is represented by this masculine energy, by the emperor here. It definitely feels like this, figuratively speaking, it feels like this person or this energy of you in the emperor was solid as a rock, was stern, was hard, was unmoving, was was very rigid, whatnot, whatever. But then the waters and the flowiness of the feminine energy came in and softened up the, the earth a little bit or softened this this hard, rigid, like dry as bone masculine energy into something more fluid, something more flowing. It's definitely still holding his form, holding his potential, holding his or her um, a dominance and control and whatnot, whatever. He hasn't, this person hasn't lost any of you or you haven't lost any of your dominantly masculine traits. It's just that it's been, I don't even want to say softened, buffed. It's been buffed around the edges a little bit to make it more compassionate, to make it more whole, to make it more balanced. And in that case, that is allowing you to be more giving in some way, more compassionate, more philanthropical. It may even be influencing you to start in a new career path or get out of the path that you're in right now because it no longer resonates with you. There is definitely a balance here between the two of you, whether that uh, between the two energies within you. Now, 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 now. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so now, and then it always comes out that way, right, Heidi? I know, it's crazy. I'm, re I'm reacting to a comment that Heidi made saying, I love how almost every time, quote, this isn't necessarily romance or twin flame directed, dot, 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 and then it always comes out. I mean... That's part of my situation here. I really want, like, yes, I started my channel as a twin flame reader and a twin flame guide and all that, but then I don't want my channel to just be about that, you know? There are so many other paths and so much else, other things that people are doing. You don't, it's not all about twin flames, but it always comes out. It always finds a way to come out with me. And so here's the thing, guys. 
I'm glad it's come out this way because I wanted to talk about Twin Flames anyway. But I was like, you know what? Let me not do that. Let me just leave it up to you guys. So, okay, cool. So we've already got an energy of a general energy in terms of what's going on. And this is all directed towards the full moon that is happening in Leo on this coming Sunday. Or if you're watching this after the fact, it would be today's the 5th. Six, seven, eight, the ninth. I believe it's the ninth of sep uh, September, of February. Um, but this is good. This is good. So I want to talk now, now that we have this, we have the Empress and the Emperor here. I want to talk about the current energy between the Twin Flames. So y'all are getting a little bit of a bonus reading here. So to all of my Twin Flame peeps, we're going to talk to you guys for a second. So with this, with this being said, what I really feel like is happening here is... And, I, and I, I hesitate to say it this way because I don't want to trigger or offend any of the masculines out there that are watching this. But what I just heard is the masculines are softening up a little bit. And it's interesting that it's the Leo energy that's doing this for them. I'm not exactly sure why it's the Leo energy. It, if anything, this would probably be a Cancerian energy. Um, but it's Leo for a reason. And it feels right. Like it, I do feel like it's the Leo energy that's helping this happen. But there is a level or a feeling of compassion that's coming over the collective right now, especially maybe on, well, probably on the masculine side. That, that is what I'm hearing. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm switching over to the Golden Universal Tarot, and I just want to look at what the current energies are between the twin flames, between the masculine and the feminine. 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 <laughs> just one more shuffle here. I just want to get what's 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 the current energy between the twin flames right now? Whoa, that came right out, and it's the nine of swords. Interesting. So there's fear. There's in, there's the emperor again. Oh my god. Oh boy. Oh masculines. We have the emperor again. But, oh shit, you guys, holy shit. We have the emperor that has come out with the five of cups, the hermit, hi Virgo, the devil again, the knight of cups, and also the nine of swords. So masculines, we're talking to you here. So I'm going to speak about, the, I'm going to speak on this as if I am speaking to the masculine here all right masculine so i'm going to just speak directly to you now um you guys have been in this energy for quite some time this five of cups energy this sadness this regret this remorse this shame but also there's fear here and now i'm seeing that okay so even though the devil came out in the original poll and yes that did feel like a kind of a past energy this is also now confirming that the devil energy is also very much a, 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 a present energy. All right. Um, here's the thing. What I feel like has happened for you masculines is that you've gone through a period of deep and strong introspection. Whatever happened between you and your divine feminine really shook some shit up for you and really kind of forced you to look at yourself in some ways that you may not have ever agreed to do in the past like i really feel like you vehemently refused this in the past but for whatever reason and i'm gonna leave it i'm gonna chalk it up to the fact that this is just how the situation was divinely orchestrated or how the situation was designed to work but something snapped or something broke within you, or you finally reached a point where it was like you said to yourself, and it, it kind of feels like an intervention type energy where you, and I guess this was divine intervention, but there was a point, you reached a point where you actually absolutely had to like stop for a second and look yourself in the mirror and say, what the fuck am I doing? That's what I'm, that literally, that's what I'm getting from this. Okay, you were in that emperor energy, sure, but it was a twisted sense of, ma of narcissistic energy, okay? Uh, ex extremely controlling. And whatever happened here was very humbling, 
That's something I'm picking up on here too. That's something that's coming through with this Five of Cups energy. It was very, very humbling. And it caused you to really like look yourself in the mirror and do some deep soul searching. Now in that deep soul searching, you found your heart, the Knight of Cups. But here's the thing, Divine Masculine. You found your heart and you may even be in an energy of wanting to share what's in your heart. Maybe not with everybody, but I do feel like it's with your Divine Feminine here. But then there's this character, the Devil, with the Nine of Swords. For some of you, you are still in an energy of your ego is flaring up and you're like, I wish I was not connected to this person. I wish I was not attached to this person. I wish I didn't feel all these feelings for this person. I wish I didn't have to deal with this person. I wish I didn't have to deal with this connection with this person. But uh, for the feminines out here that are hearing this and are freaking out, you, what you need to know and masculines, what you need to be consciously aware of is the reason why this is such a, a strong dialogue in your head is because you are having trouble dealing with the regret and the shame and the remorse. And I'm hearing the feelings of uncertainty. <clears throat> and that pulls me to the other message here that the devil and the nine of swords with the, with the nine of, knight of cups is pulling forward. Because with this knight of cups energy, and especially with the six of pentacles energy that came out in the beginning, wanting to give back, wanting to give back the love that you so consciously and, con uh, uh, consciously and um, constantly receive from the divine feminine whether she's mad at you or not she still loves you and she still she still holds love for you um uh you want to give back the love that you've received like you're moving into this full moon is moving you or helping you shift into an energy where it's like i I want to give love to her too. Like I, I, I don't want to sit here stoic all the time, stone cold Steve Austin over here, not giving no love. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I, I don't, I don't even watch wrestling. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. But then, but then you have this little devil on your shoulder here. That's kind of saying to you, "Come on, man. She's never gonna take you back." She can never forgive you. You did something. You the things you did to her, man. She would never forgive you for it. Never forgive you for it. You're unlovable. You're unfaithful. You're a piece of shit. Who the hell do you think you are wanting to give love to this divine being? You'll never match up with her. Oh my god, are you out of your mind? Just cut your losses and get out of there now. But then your heart's saying, wait, no, wait, no, hold on. No, that's not, no, no, that's not true. Yes, it is true. No, actually, it's not true. This, my dear masculine, is an illusion. The only power the devil will ever have over you is the power that you consciously and willingly hand right over to him. Hello. Don't give this guy any more power. Do you understand me? Because it's not worth it. Now, you do have overall energy, masculines. You do have the seven of pentacles here. Um, <clears throat> so yes, there is an energy of having made your bed and now need, needing to lay on it. And that's where this, or, I'm sorry, lay in it. And that's where this this devil energy is kind of like, having a field day or at least has the potential to have a field day because I really do feel like this devil keeps bringing up the past and all the heartbreak and all the bullshit but masculine I mean what all you really need to do divine masculine all you really need to do is to look at this energy you have here you have the emperor where you're still standing in your divine masculine power I love you guys too um you're standing in your divine masculine power. You never really left it. It's just a matter of reshaping it and reorganizing it so that it's a healthier version than it was before, right? Take this five of cups out. We're going to leave that with the devil. The devil is going to get all the sorrow. Okay, we'll, we'll stick him. We'll, we'll stick him. We'll stick him with the bill for all of like the pain and the tears and the hurt, heartbreak and all that. He can have that bill. But I want you to focus on this energy here. The emperor, the hermit, 
and the Knight of Cups. And I want you to focus on how much progress you have made. Because that's what's really important here. And to be quite honest, and don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, we are going into the feminine energies next, okay? Just, you just hold your horses. But the thing about reconnecting with your feminine is that can happen at any time, whenever you feel is right, okay? Whenever you think is the right time for it. But to help ensure your success, Divine Masculine, okay, from a feminine to the masculine, you might want to take my advice just a little bit. You might want to listen just a little bit here, okay? The saving grace for you is going to be showing that you recognize the past and the lessons involved with it, that you've grown from it. And don't get me wrong, the feminine needs to do the same thing. This is a two-way street, y'all, okay? But masculine, if you really want to win some brownie points, show the feminine that you learned from the past. Show the feminine that you are, in fact, not that, that controlling narcissistic emperor that you were in the past, but that you are this more compassionate, grounded, balanced, and, and caregiving type emperor who still knows how to hold it down, who still knows how to drive the ship, who still knows how to get to business, okay, but is not in an energy of completely rejecting the feminine side. Because, oh, by the way, Divine Masculine, you've got feminine energy within too. But you see, if you're reaching this level, I really do feel like you've been on in an energy of balancing and integrating your feminine side, which is allowing you the ability and the opportunity to, to connect with your feminine, but also is allowing you the desire, I guess we could call it, to even want to connect with your feminine and vibe with her on in any sort of way. Yeah? Well, shit, y'all. I was just about to say, okay, feminine, it's your turn. And looky what we have here. It's a star. I, okay, so I really love using these two decks because they're literally the same images, only the, the Golden Universal Tarot is just that, golden. But look, we have repeats again. The star was the overall energy after clarifying... The Emperor with the Six of Pentacles, which then produced the Devil, which then produced the Empress and the Star underneath the deck. So I'm reading this in two ways, guys. And this actually, if you guys watched Morning Coffee today, um, you know that I've, in the, for the last two days, I've been talking about this energy of like, you're making an energetic shift into a new realm for yourself. And you're like, you're in between the realms where you're kind of experiencing a little bit of the past energy and you're still kind of trying to acclimate with the with the future or the current energies that of the cycle that you're moving into. And I, I described it as like a Venn diagram situation where like you have the two cycles that are like come together in this tiny spot in the center and then you're moving from one into the other. That's what I that's the energy that I feel right now. Like we're literally in a Venn diagram between the masculine energies and the feminine energies. So this star card here is, yes, it is an energy for the feminine. I'm reading it as that. But this is also a shared energy between the two of you. The two of you really want this to happen. And I really feel with the star here, I feel a strong energy of um, doing the work that is necessary, following through and doing what it is that's necessary in order to do the healing, get, get the healing done so that you two can come together. And I really do feel like this is a very conscious thing within the collective right now. Okay. Feminines, I feel like those of you that have been in an energy where you feel very detached from your twin, from your divine masculine, you're in an energy where you don't really feel like you love him or her, it doesn't matter, but I'll say him just because we're speaking of the divine masculine and divine feminine, but, um, and that's just energy. I feel like this disconnection is actually a much, a, a strong part of your healing because what I feel the strongest thing that is, that is happening for the Divine Feminine Collective is you're learning to love your Divine Masculine in a whole new way. So there's an energy of all of a sudden, boop, you no longer love the Masculine the way you used to. It may even feel like you don't love him at all. But it's literally just a, a, an energy of the way you love him and your love for him is changing. And that feels foreign to you. You have to like relearn it in a sense. Okay, and for some of you, I am picking up that it's an energy where you have to completely shut off for a while first and allow some of that old energy to clear out before this new 
I want to say way of being, that's what spirit just said, this new form, this new, maybe even new focus of this love so that, so that that can then come in once you're ready for it. Okay. The star and underneath the, underneath the deck is the five of pentacles. No. Okay. Fine. All right, guys. All right, guys. So uh, there is a collective energy between the two of us or the two of you, divine feminine, divine masculine of like, I really want this. I really, really want this. But I don't know if I'm worthy of it. Okay. All right. So let, let's keep looking into this for the divine feminine here. All right. And this star energy really is saying to me that you're actually, you are in fact being led, divine feminine. You're still being guided. You haven't gotten off this path. It's just changing. And... You're still being being led to the divine partner that you that you're aligning with that you've been working so hard on aligning with. You're still in some cases or in many cases I will say in cases of true twin flames, you're still being led to your divine masculine. You're still being led to your twin. And many of you know who this is already. But again, the situation is is shifting. It's very much an energy where the tower strikes and it's okay. Yeah, I feel like many of you did deal with a tower energy. Um, a tower strike. And it could be just the, the realization that, boop, oh my God, I don't love this person anymore. It's, but it's really just that the love for this person is changing. And now you're kind of surrounded by darkness because what you had before had been struck down. And, but you only have this one speck of light that's guiding you here. Okay? And it feels foreign. It doesn't feel like the way it did before. So for the Divine Feminine, let's look a little bit more into this, this star energy. Well, shit. Well, shit. Oh, my God. You guys, this is scary. This shit is fucking scary sometimes, you guys. First of all, the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine are mirroring each other. Because the Divine Feminine, now you have the Hermit here. And you also got it with the Empress. So we were doing the Divine Masculine reading and he came out in his energy and now Divine Feminine, you're coming out again in yours. This is some scary shit, you guys. All right. Overall energy is the Wheel of Fortune. Excellent. Jada. Okay. Check it out, Feminines. Oh, shit. I only have eight minutes. All right, morning, uh, happy hour. Um, if y'all are waiting for happy hour, happy hour is going to be a little bit late because we need to have a talk right now. Feminines, sit down and listen, please. Y'all are going through a period where you are being forced to face yourselves. And I know I'm getting a little bit stern here, um, but this is a message that's been coming through in my, in my channelings, in my readings for some time. And this is also something... Um, if you've been following me, you know that I mentioned, um, what's her name? Uh, Enchanted World of Twin Flames. Because one of my viewers of Morning Coffee, sorry guys, I'm, I'm messing with my computer, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about this while I do this. But because um, one of the viewers of Morning Coffee mentioned her and said that something that I was channeling and picking up for the collective was something that she also spoke of. And I went and I checked her out and it was right. Um, and so this is also a message that's been coming through with, through her because it's like, she was in this energy of kind of falling out of the connection with her divine masculine. And she was explaining it as being very much ready to let go and to move on to something else. Um, and there were, you know, there's a little bit of guilt that was coming with that, but this has been a collective thing. Like all, many of us in this collective, we're just like ready. We're like, all right, look, either it's going to be you or it's going to be somebody else, but either way, it doesn't really matter. I'm not, you know, whatever. But she had, she was having trouble and her guides ultimately said to her, um, and she spoke about this in her most recent reading, which is titled love, um, on her channel, uh, as of. I mean, it's as re it's recent as of February 5th. But anyway, um, she said that her guide said to her, let's look at it this way. Have you, or I'm paraphrasing a bit, but have you ever really thought of anyone like this person? Has this, has anyone else had such an impact on your life the way this person has? And the, qu the answer to that question was, well, no. And it's the exact same thing for me, okay? 
So this was all an effort to get her to not like try and like jump off the path, right? So what's happening here, Divine Feminine, is it's time for us to now start working on meeting the masculine in the middle. This is not a situation in which the masculine has to go through leaps and bounds and all kinds of hurdles and raise his vibration up ridiculously high to come sit up with us on the fifth dimensional realms or in the spiritual realms. That's not what the masculine is designed for. And vice versa. It is not for you, feminine, to drop down and, and, and like settle into the three-dimensional world the way the masculine naturally does. That's not what you're designed for. You, feminine, focus your, your power, your mastery in the spiritual realms. The masculine, or you, masculine, focus your power or center your power in the physical realms. Together, we come together and we harmonize and we create the union between what you could call heaven and earth or spirit and matter. No, <laughs> heart and star. So what I'm trying to say here, feminine, is we have got to meet the masculine halfway. So there, are, uh, divine feminine, you're going through with some energy here where you have to face yourself too. You have to start looking at yourself and saying, okay, how? what is my involvement in the situation? How have I been toxic here? What have I been contributing to the situation that is less than desirable? How have I been narcissistic or manipulative towards the masculine? How have I been selfish and egoic and controlling, only wanting things my way? That doesn't mean... That does not mean that you're not supposed to have your own boundaries. And that does not mean that you're not supposed to hold standards for yourself. That doesn't mean that you're not supposed to know your worth. But you also need to recognize the worth in the divine masculine, let alone everyone else. But you need to recognize the worth in the divine masculine and what the divine masculine brings to the equation from a physical point of view. It is not for the divine masculine to for completely forsake the 3D. It is for none of us to completely forsake the 3D. So that means, feminine, you have got to get in touch with your masculine side and start learning to play the 3D game to the best of your ability while the masculine gets to know his feminine side and learns to play the 5D or spiritual game <coughs> in the best way he or she can. But you see, you see how I got choked up right there? Y'all are gagging, aren't you? Because I'm calling you out, aren't I? All relationships are a two-way street, Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. Just because the Divine Feminine is leading the way spiritually, that does not mean that she knows everything about everything. Because the Divine Masculine is leading the way physically. I'll tell you what. I'm the feminine here. All right. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use my situation as um as an example. I'm a feminine here, okay? And I have this YouTube channel and I have this ability to channel energies and connect and read people and give people guidance and help in terms of that. That's my gift coming from the spiritual realm. My twin, my divine masculine, let me tell you, he is a master of the physical realm. Now, he knows how to work a crowd. He knows how to make a sale. He knows how to paint amazing art. He knows how to play fantastic music. I mean, he is a master of the physical realm. And it is not my place to tell him, you need to forsake all of that and come join me in the spiritual realms. No. And it's not his place to tell me, you need to get off all that spiritual shit and come down to earth. No. It is for us to meet each other halfway in the middle to the best of our individual abilities. Overall energy for you, Divine Feminine. The Wheel of Fortune. Change. Progress, I'm hearing. Also, karma. Some of this, Divine Feminine, you need to be aware of the karma that you may have been generating for yourself in terms of all this. And start looking at how you have been feeding into this negative karmic loop. 
just like the masculine has. I'm not saying it's all your fault, but I'm also saying I'm also saying that it's not all the masculine's fault either. And that's what I feel like is happening for some of the divine feminine collective. I'm going to get one more pull here just to close this out and then I have got to move over to, to YouTube. So I'm going to be over at YouTube a little bit late. But let's get a closing message here. Oh, fucking right. <laughs> fucking right, y'all. So what do we have as a closing message? The situation has come full circle from the very beginning to the very end. We have closing message of the Six of Pentacles, the King of Wands, the Page of Cups, and Judgment. And actually, this is a closing message for the feminines here because because what I see is the masculine coming forward, waiting for the right time to strike, of course, but coming forward passionately, confidently, sure, offering a cup of love. There you have it. This is exactly what I was picking up on in the very beginning. Six of Pentacles, wanting to give back the love that they had received in kind. Page of Cups. Judgment even. Being called to it. But see, this is where this becomes the overall collective energy. And this is where we shift into a message for the feminine. There is a call to action here to clean up your end of the street. Divine Feminine, if you really want your twin flame, your Divine Masculine, to feel comfortable enough to even think about approaching you, then you have to change your energetic resonance. You have to change your vibration. And you have to start giving off the energies of compassion, understanding, forgiveness, openness. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're not ready for that, okay, that is perfectly fine. Take your time. Do what it is you need to do. But I feel like there are some of you out there that are specifically holding resentful energy for your divine masculine. And at this point, I'm going to say it's specific, like you're doing it intentionally. And... Even going so far, and this is how this is how the feminine could be playing the narcissism game, even going so far as to specifically hold the divine masculine at, let's say, let's say arm's length energetically, while still entertaining a bunch of other masculine ener energies that I, I feel for whomever this is for are very, fairly karmic in nature and saying, you, you know what, boys, you come on right in here, but you, you can't come in and actually you're going to stand right there and you're going to watch all of this happen. Really? Do you recognize that that negative karma is going to come back and bite you in the ass? Because I'll tell you right now, all those karmic masculines that you're letting into your life, they're fuckboys, just like the person that you're trying to get away from, aren't they? Think about it. If this is truly something that you want, Divine Feminine, then you have to play the role. You can't half-ass it. You can't have one foot in one pond or one foot in the other and one foot in the other. You can't be entertaining a bunch of options if you know that this one person is the person that you want to be with. You're meant to be with, even. You're either in or you're out. You're either in or you're out. But I say this lovingly and I say this encouragingly. And if it's not something you want, then okay. That's cool. And stop complaining about it then. And then you're like, but Eric, I'm not trying to complain about it, but this is not what I want. And spirit just won't shut up about it. Well, then maybe you need to listen and maybe you need to take a different perspective. Because I know spirit didn't leave me alone about it for a very specific reason. And I finally was able to come to terms with what that reason was. And in that, I had to admit that, you know what, damn it, I still do love this man. And if given the chance, I would absolutely jump at the opportunity to be with him. And yes, I said that correctly. Jump at the opportunity. Maybe that's not so healthy, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Well, 
That sure was a doozy, wasn't it, y'all? Look, I and I know once this gets up onto YouTube and people get to start to watch it, I know I'm going to lose some subscribers off this shit. But you know what? So be it. I am not here to tell you what you want to hear. And I am definitely not here. Damn sure I am not here to sugarcoat anything for you. Okay. I love you guys. And I need to get over to YouTube because I'm, I'm five minutes late now. But we needed to have that conversation. We needed to have that conversation. And I was not about to cut it short. So. All right, kids. There you have it. And <laughs> you guys are hilarious. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm moving over. I love you guys so very much. If you're not going to, um, if you're not going to join me over on, if you're not going to join me over on YouTube, then I will see you in the morning for morning coffee. And I look forward to, hi, Leanne. I look forward to seeing you guys. Um, for another live session really soon here on Instagram, yeah? Okay, awesome. I love you all so very much. Have a great night if I don't see you on YouTube, yeah? Mwah! Bye!